Hello, and welcome to this lesson on requesting market data in the Interactive Brokers Client Portal API. In this lesson, we will be discussing how to find the snapshot fields, how to request live market data snapshots, and how to request historical market data. Let's begin by first looking at the Interactive Brokers Endpoints documentation page. If we scroll down, we will eventually find our iServer market data snapshot endpoint that we will be working with today. If we click on the banner, we will expand the snapshot section to reveal more information on the endpoint. The reason to check out this section is that we can find what data values we want to work with. Under the responses portion, I can see where it shows model. If we click that, we should find a new gray box. I can click the right pointed arrow to expand things. I will see a massive list of all available field values to use the snapshot endpoint. Some of the most popular values are 31, 55, 84, and 86. As we can see by looking through this page, I will retrieve my last price, symbol, bid, and ask values respectively. There are more values here that we encourage you to explore, but this will give us a great example to get started. With our fields found, we could start taking a closer look at the actual request. Jumping back to VS Code, I will create a new program with my typical framework and a method named Market Snapshot. I will create my endpoint for my market data request and set iServer forward slash market data forward slash snapshot. The snapshot endpoint utilizes a get request, so now we can start building a parameters list. We can first create a conID variable and set it equal to con IDs equals 265598 for Apple. Some viewers may have picked up the fact that we stated con IDs, plural, instead of just con ID. That is because this endpoint allows for multiple contract requests at once. You will just need to use a comma to separate each contract ID. Let's do that by including IBM or 8314. With our contracts set, I will move our fields variable. I will set the variable equal to fields equals 31, comma, 55, comma, 84, comma, 86, and an end quote, based on what we found before. That is all we need in order to get started with our requests. I will create a params variable and concatenate my parameters. After that, I can create my full URL with the request URL set to a set of quotes followed by dot join, and then in parentheses, and then in a list, I will do base URL followed by our endpoint variable, followed by a string of a question mark, and then fo finally followed by our params variable. Again, I can create a market rec variable and create a new get request. I can use my json.dumps method from before to help with readability. And finally, we will print both variables to see our response status and body. So if we make a few requests, we should see all of our fields returned. I would like to take a moment to discuss how data is requested and returned. The first request will typically only display the con ID EX and the con ID. This is just to signify that you have requested data for the given contract. You can think of this as instantiating the market data stream. Oftentimes for stocks, you can make another follow-up request right away and receive data. However, it's important to note that fields like 7310 or the options Greek theta can take a few requests or even a few moments to begin. That is because some values may not be readily available and must be calculated by interactive brokers before returning. Especially on less active strikes, this can take up to a minute before returning these fields. With our live market data returning as intended, we can now move on to historical market data requests. In addition to our standard framework, I will add an endpoint variable and set this equal to hmbs forward slash history for my historical data request. 
This is yet another get request, so this will be built with a set of parameters, con ID, period, bar, and optionally, outside RTH and bar type. As opposed to live data, the historical data request only allows a single con ID at a time. As such, I will make a con ID variable and set it equal to 265598 for Apple. Now I can make a period variable. This will determine the total range of data returned. It can scale from minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, or even years. But given our example today, I will set it equal to 1w for one week. Then I can create my bar variable and set it equal to 1d so I can receive each day's bar for a whole week. If I wanted to, I can make a request now and receive data without issue. However, I would like to move on to some of our optional parameters. I will start by setting outside RTH to true. By default, outside RTH is set to false, so we can only see regular trading hours. However, we can choose to disable this. Next, I will create a bar type variable and in my case, set it equal to midpoint. Again, I will create a few join variables followed by my request, JSON, and print values. And so, if we request this data, we will see our bars returned for what was requested along with their OHLC values. It's important to note that some values such as the default last value, the bar type parameter, will return volume for the bars as well, notated by the V field returned. Please feel free to explore our available values for both of these endpoints to find the best data for you. Thank you for watching this lesson on requesting market data in the Client Portal API. If you find this lesson helpful, please check out our other lessons in the Client Portal API tutorial series.